making a trip down to uh, Toledo Bend. This place has been red hot lately, so I wanted to get down here to see what it's all about, what the fuss is all about. But if uh, you follow things online, you know that it seems like every day, or pretty close to every day, every other day, somebody's weighing in something 10 pounds or bigger. Why is that? Well, there's some various reasons why, but we're gonna try to get the answers firsthand. So what we're doing is we're meeting up with a couple of guides from Living the Dream Guide Service uh, out here. So we are gonna be there in a few minutes. It is a uh, foggy morning for us. Hopefully the fog will lift so we can get on out there. We're gonna make a quick little pit stop up here to grab a couple of snacks uh, from our place there, Toledo Town and Tackle. Always try to support them as they support us. But stay tuned, everybody. We're heading on out here this morning and we will see what happens. You like days like this where it's almost glass, or you like days when it's windy and breezy, so you got some ripple. I like wind. <laughs> to me, this it's tough when it's slick like this because the fish get to see your bait so much better. You know, people like they'll be out here throwing a spinner bait down the bank. I'm like, man, you got to put that up. They go, well, I like throwing a spinner bait. I said, I do too, but if you don't have any wind, you know, the, the fish get too good a look at your bait for too long. So whenever you got wind it breaks up the silhouette of the bait it just seems like it works a whole lot better no what's it like out here when it's 15 miles an hour add on, i tell people add on like an extra 10. well if the, if the weatherman says five to ten normally you add them together and it's, it's 15. but like you said if you get a 15 or 20 mile an hour wind over here you got 60 miles for it to get to rolling you know on the land you know if you're around a field that's a mile wide and it blows a you know how bad it is on the other side of the field. So you get out here in a 15 mile hour wind, you may have three foot waves. Second. Are you using live scope to be out right now or what? I have it on, yeah. <clears throat> this is just one of them places we normally catch them. You know, they tend to, there's a, a hard spot out there we're throwing up on the top of. And uh, it's one of them deals, now you can't always keep it on, you know? Because it, like yesterday morning. <coughs> there's one. There's one. Oh, oh that's yeah, a decent got one. a jumper. That's a start. Yeah. As long as we get him in the boat. Look at there. Old Carolina rig ain't bad, huh? <laughs> uh oh. Oh, there it is. You got a sweet tooth. Oh, a hair lit one. Look at his mouth. Good proof the, of catch and release right there. I was fixing to say, now tell me catch and release don't, don't work. Look at his mouth where it's has been tore. Somebody threw him back, and lo and behold, he's biting again. See, it's got eggs in it. Healthy as it can be. So, ain't nothing wrong with that. All right. Yeah. Okay. See, now, I, everybody picks at me, but I throw a big sinker. I throw a one ounce sinker all the time. Up there where we're throwing, it's not seven or eight foot deep. But with the big sinker, I can feel the bottom all the time. And a lot of people we take fishing don't fish that much, so they can feel everything. It helps them throw it, helps you stay in contact with the bottom, even when you have a big wind, which we don't have right now. But that big sinker don't bother them fish at all. 
I've caught them in three foot all the way out to 35 foot with it, the same thing. Now, if you're fishing grass, you kind of have to make an adjustment, you know. That's why Matt's got a smaller sinker because he was fishing grass with his. And typically, we don't all start off doing the same thing, you know. Right. You, you got an idea what you think they're going to bite, but typically, I start off with throwing plastics. We'll throw three different colors, and whoever gets the uh, most bites will adjust accordingly. I just had one bump in mine. Popped it. <clears throat> yeah. It see, to I me, the sunshine spot. helps this situation a whole lot. And one thing about it, you feel everything down there with this thing. I think that's my biggest issue. Is that sometimes you feel everything to bite. There you go. Uh oh. That's a better one. Yeah, it is. Get my line out your way here. <clears throat> uh oh. Four pounder. We got a just a good one. Yeah, I'm gonna get in here and grab him in the lip if you don't mind. Look at there, he's posing for. <laughs> that's a good one. Well, that hooked good too. And see, that's a prime example. I was rooting around with that big old sinker in that wood, and you just gotta have a feel for it. That one hooked good. Let's see, that's a good quality fish for this time of the year. <clears throat> See, that's what they look like. You can see them bouncing around there on the bottom. There's a little school now, of them. They look awfully small versus whenever I look at crappie, they look bigger than that. Well, you have to understand that you're also look. Those are not probably not very big fish. Yeah. However, you know, bass is longer than a crappie. Right. And not as not as uh, like they don't have the girth, ball. right? The like crappie. Football. Yeah, that's right because of their shape. Bass yeah. will look bigger too, especially the bigger ones when they're up in the water column. But it also depends on the view you're getting of them. You know. You, you have to stay with a fish for a little while to really get a good judge of his size because what will happen sometimes is if he's swimming, you know, at the wrong angle where you're hitting him from the skinny side, you just don't, he doesn't, he might not look that big. Then all of a sudden he turns and you get to see, oh man, that's a bigger one than I thought. So right now we're, uh, we're throwing a Carolina rig with a, a pretty heavy weight on it. Uh, was that a one ounce, Dusty? That's a one ounce. We're throwing a one ounce. Just a, you know, a, a Toledo Bend staple. The, uh, the Carolina rig, it's just a, a certified fish catching rig, year in, year out. It never really goes out of style. So and you can a, put on the end of, on the back of it, you can put whatever you want. You can put a crawl, crawl worm on there, you can put a lizard, a flute, brush off. I'm surprised I didn't have a bite on that last cast. That was coming right behind you, I thought. It must have been a little too far away. We found them sitting right here. They're right here under the boat watch. Mm -hmm. That one school had quite a few in it. See, there's some yeah. right there sitting on the bottom. See, there's one right out of the trolling motor. And what's amazing, look at them swimming around up off the bottom. And what's amazing, you can look at them on this and see it live version and then look up here and it'll be like 10 or 15 second delay. So what's amazing, the fish we've been catching for years on there, we thought we're right here, we're gone. We're actually catching other fish. So <clears throat> that thing there, you know, it, it definitely changed the way people fish. Show me that this is the right technique to do. That's right. That's and that's pretty much how it goes. Go ahead. Another oh. decent one. Yeah, that's a little keeper. You know, everybody's got their their way they like to fish. And you picking at me about Matt not catching me right now. <laughs> you get up here with a live scope and the tide's gonna turn. Cause I, I don't like the live scope. This is what I like to do. I like the old Carolina rig. Like my buddy Vince Richards picks on me. I, I went to Caddo Lake, caught them on Carolina rig. Everywhere I go, I catch them on Carolina rig because it's a confidence bait. So you got to have confidence in what you're doing. And like you was, you was asking for, you're so rudely interrupted by that fish. You know, some people you, you bring out here, they're not going to be able to do this. So you got to be, that's why we end up with 10 rods on the deck. You got to be doing something that your clients can, can catch them in, whether it be a wacky worm or Cinco's or crankbaits. You know, everybody wants to catch them on top water and spinner baits, me included, but normally it don't work like that. You know, I hit the record off button right when you set that thing. <laughs> My finger was on it. I got it back on though. Hey. Oh, it's a good one. I just want to see what you got. Well, he's just doing that because the boat's coming. See, now he's showing off. We'll have a, 
Well, Wait. I only got one, but see, I, I, Dusty got me out here in his element. Started whooping me with the Carolina rig, so I had to. That kid thought he was going after a whole school. Of them. I had to play a little trickery there. Don't worry, I got it worked one out for me on. this time. Try not to use it, but I've got one on. And it never fails. When a boat comes. When a boat comes, yeah. and you're trying to hide your special spot, you get one. Ooh, this one's kind of mad too. He don't like it. I don't blame him. You had that many hooks in you, you yeah. wouldn't like it. Yeah, no kidding. Huh? I'm about how many got in him. Just, just one. He just ate one. Ooh, don't want to grab the line like I just did and lose him. They normally hook pretty good. You got to make sure not to hook yourself either with all these hooks flying around. All right, There's a Toledo to to move some, before Matt catches another one. I think he thought he was going to catch up on you with one cast. No, I, I tried to let him fight a little while. It so don't take long. With that thing. <laughs> it don't take long with Good that. Good example thing. of a healthy Toledo Bend female. Oh, pretty quick. See, there goes the bait down towards the fish. Got him. Here we go. Hold on. Get your foot off the pedal. I'm going to try to find it. Oh, no. Yeah, that's a foul one. Yeah. Mm hmm. Chipped him there. Yeah, he's a good one. Oh, he's wobbly, dude. Really? Cool. Toledo Bend football bass. Look at how round that fish is. He's bigger round. Yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. been pretty fruitful this year for big fish, anyway. You know, the, the numbers of fish, have, we've been catching numbers of fish for years now, and we stay on them pretty good, but this year, as a as a whole, it's been more big fish caught since the 1st of January than it was from May until January. Daniel, they mauled That one attacked me. I made him go skiing for a minute. Oh, he come off. Oh, years back, when the lake was, you know, catching all them big ones every year, you see a lot of people come down from Missouri and Oklahoma and Arkansas, and they pull their boats down here, and they might stay for a week, you know? And, and that's good for the economy because they're eating out, buying groceries and gas and everything else down here. And uh, so it, it looks like that's coming back. There you go. Uh-oh. Look at that big sinker about to drown him. <laughs> Some spotted bass there. Oh, I ought to get a bite right there. Yeah. I'm in a rough. People may say, well, the lake didn't go down real far this past year, now we have grass growing. Well, yeah, you're right. But the last two years, it stayed a lot right around that 168 Right. This past winter, but the winter before, was a very dry winter. Mm -hmm. The lake stayed down, like Matt said, 168. The sun was able to penetrate, hit the bottom, and same thing, the grass started growing. It's just like if you took a giant tarp, a big black tarp, and put over your whole yard, and the sun didn't get to it, your grass would die. And this grass on this lake does the same thing. That high, muddy water kills the grass quicker than anything. Look at Red River, it flooded three or four years in a row like nine foot high. All that pretty high drilling, coontail in there. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, Ram Bunk, may I grab him for you? Nah, we need to come on in. There you go. You got a trolling motor? Yeah. Got fish slime on the foot. What? Isn't that terrible? See, that's the same stretch of bank we've been fishing. This fish here looks like it's already spawned out, as you can see by his belly. And, uh, you know, Matt caught a, a nice football right down the bank there, 70 or 80 yards. And we've had a couple more slap the rattle trap. That's why I picked up a Cinco and slowed down a little bit. So if they're not biting one thing in a spot, they'll hopefully bite something else. My husband and a friend of his started guiding a little bit part-time and they decided they wanted to be full-time guides and expected to be able to fish about, I think JT said about 50 times a year. And it just grew and grew until we ended up having three and four guides and at that point we decided it needed to get bigger or get smaller. We offer um, crappie trips, cycle trips, um, bass trips. We can book lodging for the people, we do corporate events, we do bachelor parties, we do family reunions, um, boat rentals, jet ski rentals, um, 
So we do a little bit of it all. We have a catch and cook permit here, so we can cook the, the food, the fish, after they bring it in. Um, and we'll fry fish a lot for corporate events or big groups. Um, we'll cater steak dinners every once in a while for big groups. They can go to our website, um, www.ltd.fish, or they can call us here at the office at 318-256-8991.